Hello and welcome. This is Reddit Tosker. In this video, I want to talk about Monster Hunter Sunbreak. And this will mark the beginning of my Sunbreak content. And I have to say, I am very excited. Now, if you've followed my channel for a while, you might be aware that I have mixed feelings about Monster Hunter Rise. And I aired out the grievances I had with it in my Monster Hunter Rise review video. Now, despite the negative review, I really liked Monster Hunter Rise. I liked it a lot. I talked about that in the video. My problems with it boil down to basically two points. They're very simple issues. Monster Hunter Rise was too easy, and Monster Hunter Rise had no good endgame. Shocking, I know. But as basic as those complaints are, they're true. And what's funny is that those things are only problems because Monster Hunter Rise's combat is so fun. I don't mind the fast-paced gameplay. In fact, I like it. I like it a lot. But Rise gave the Hunter so many switch skills and counters and positioning tools, so many ways to deal damage and avoid it. And I felt that the monsters didn't really have a way to keep up with that. What little difficulty Rise did have was backloaded to the end of the game. In fact, it was so backloaded, it didn't exist in the game until months after the game's release. The really hard monsters in Monster Hunter Rise, I would say, would be Valstrax, Thunderlords and Ochre, the Emergency Apex quests, you know, maybe Teostra. But all of those were part of title updates, months after the game was already out. Now, I don't have any problems with the hardest difficulty things happening at the end of a game's life cycle. In fact, I think that's appropriate. But I also would have preferred to have some walls littered around the beginning parts of the game. I would have liked at least a few monsters to get me stuck and make me think, you know, I should upgrade my armor, get better armor. Maybe I should farm for some gear. Maybe I should slot in some decorations. In Monster Hunter World, things like that did happen. There were little challenges along the way to the endgame. For example, the Pink Rathian quest, the Double Basil Goose quest, the Tempered Kirin quest. They weren't overwhelmingly difficult, but all of these were required to progress on the way to the endgame. And they were definitely more of a challenge than anything that Monster Hunter Rise had along the way. The real problem with the lack of difficulty in Rise was that because the monsters weren't very hard, beating them didn't feel like much of an accomplishment. It felt great to move around and use all of these different cool moves. It's so fun, it's probably my favorite gameplay in the series so far. And it is precisely for that reason that I would have liked a harder game. It would have made the monsters more memorable. It would have made victories feel more deserved. Truly, the reason that I have criticisms at all is because I like Rise so much. And that's also true for the endgame. At the end of my playtime in Monster Hunter Rise, I had something like 180 hours. And that, that's a good time. For most video games, that's a reflection that you really liked the game. But for a Monster Hunter game, those are rookie numbers. Those are chump numbers. I poured so many hours into Monster Hunter World, I'm almost embarrassed to talk about it. I don't even want to tell you how many hours I poured into that. An embarrassing amount. For whatever reason, the endgame in Rise did not inspire people to continue playing. This is a very common story with people. Not only do I see this in my own comment sections, I see this in comment sections of other creators. I see this in Twitter posts, in Reddit posts. People all have this experience where, for whatever reason, Rise doesn't capture their attention the way that other Monster Hunter games did. At least not for as long. And even content creators that love Monster Hunter Rise far more than I do have said pretty much the same thing with just some paraphrasing. Off the top of my head, I remember the popular channel Rage Gaming had a video that said something along the lines of, I'm not done with Monster Hunter Rise, but it feels like it's done with me, or something like that. With the point of that video being precisely what I was saying, that for whatever the reason, Rise was not capturing their interest for as long as other Monster Hunter games had, world specifically. And those two things are basically the heart of my problem. I wanted Rise to be harder, and I wanted it to have a longer shelf life, to last longer. And both of those complaints come from a place of love. Because, like I said, I like Monster Hunter Rise a great deal. I think it's very fun. So fun that I would have liked to play it more and longer. Now with that said, let's talk about Monster Hunter Sunbreak. How does what I said apply to Sunbreak? Do I think that Sunbreak is going to fix those two problems? Is it going to give me the experience I'm looking for? Well... Yeah, actually, I think it might. In terms of difficulty, we have the demo to look at. In the Sunbreak demo, we got two new monsters. 
Astalos and Malzeno, and they are both looking fantastic in the demo. I know that the damage numbers might change. For example, Malzeno is not going to be as difficult in the main game as he is in the demo, of course. But even if we just look at their moveset, they look good. Astalos is incredibly fast and aggressive, more so than basically anything in the base game. And Malzeno, he's just on a whole other level. First of all, what a fantastically designed monster. The song, the teleportation, the blood blight effect. He is so cool, it's almost hard to believe. So far, he's my favorite monster in all of Rise. And it's not just his design, his moveset is also quite aggressive and able to catch you if you're not paying attention. If these two monsters are any indication and their movesets are reflective of what the movesets of other unseen monsters are going to look like, then I would say that I have nothing to worry about. The difficulty in Sunbreak is going to be exactly what I'm looking for. You can kind of tell that too, because they went back and they changed some moves for the Tritranodon and the Aknasom. And they too are significantly harder. I found myself getting caught by Tritranodon's new grab attack quite a lot. Aknasom has this cool bouncing fireball effect thing. And both of them are moving more aggressively. Aknasom moves in weird ways. He caught me a lot, actually. I was very surprised. I think from what we see, there's a lot to suggest that I'm, I'm going to be happy with Sunbreak's difficulty. G-Rank expansions, Master Rank expansions, are supposed to be hard. That's their whole point. And if the movesets of Malzeno and Astalos are any indication, if the expanded movesets of Aknasom and Tranodon are any indication, I'd say we are exactly on the right track. I am very optimistic about the difficulty. So what about the other major problem I had? The longevity of the game, the end game. Well, there's still no information on an end game loop, whatever it might be. But honestly, anything would be better than what we currently have. They could implement anything and it would be an improvement. But there is other signs that lead me to be optimistic for that as well. Take a look at their roadmap. In their first free title update, which will be in August, they are re releasing Lucent Nargakuga and several other monsters. The word several implies three. Okay, so that's at least four monsters right there. They also seem to be releasing an entirely new locale, which is pretty impressive. That's nice. The second title update happens in fall. It shows the images of two monsters in the background, and it says rare species and subspecies monsters. Now, practically, this might mean that they're just releasing two monsters in the fall, but the fact that they say monsters, rare species monsters, subspecies monsters, could imply that more than one, you know, it could be two rare species monsters and two subspecies monsters, which would be interesting if they if they meant that. But apart from that, the most interesting part about this is where it says powered up monsters, because powered up monsters probably means something like tempered monsters in Monster Hunter World. That's huge. That adds a whole nother layer of longevity to the game. What I find most interesting about it is that these title updates could change what the end game looks like. Like, for example, the end game's longevity could be increased simply because it's different from update to update. If in the base game, the end game ends up looking like something, and then in August it ends up looking differently, and then in fall, with the addition of these powered up monsters, it ends up changing again, that on its own would increase the lifespan of the game, which I think is great. I think it's fantastic. Finally, in winter, it again says several new monsters, which implies at least three. So if we take the words of this title update seriously, literally, then in August we'll get four monsters, at least. In fall, we'll get four monsters, at least. And in winter, we'll get three monsters, at least, for a total of 11. And powered up monsters along the way. And all this before the end of the year. This is great. This makes me incredibly happy. This makes me so hopeful and optimistic. I am ready to believe. And that's the end of this video. As always, thank you very much for watching.